so Jay Stu, I was I was wondering because this was something I felt like was kind of right up your alley, right? Is uh, is how we're watching now, and the U.S. women's national team is not drawing well or getting any attention. And I guess this is one of those. Do you think if they could do it all over again, they would include Caitlin Clark? Have you have you have you noticed though? And and like, look, I don't think it's intentional. Okay, I don't think NBC not paying attention to it is intentional. It's just not interesting. Right? It's just not interesting. And and you know they've done this to themselves. They're still winning, and they're still going to win the thing. They're still the best team. But they're not interesting anymore. There's nothing of that that's interesting. And if I'm sitting there and I'm in a production meeting, like, hey, do we want to talk to the women's coach of UTM USA or do we want to talk to the guy who, the pole vaulter who hit his junk on the pole? Like, yeah, that guy. You see, like, if you notice that NBC, NBC and Peacock, which is NBC, they're not focused on the women's national team. They're not having the players in studio. Again, I don't watch every moment, so if I'm if I'm mistaken, please tell me. But it's not a talking point. Right? We're not talking point about it at all. We're back to covering women's basketball the way it's always been covered, where nobody really cares, nobody really pays attention. It doesn't matter that we're better than everybody else. It's just what's the – there is no ratings boon from covering it, whereas with the men – Clearly, there is any Olympic sport, regardless of men and women. There is a higher percentage of women watching as opposed to how many women watch normal sports, regardless of whether it's men or otherwise. OK, it just is. That's just again, we can we can kind of track the etymology, 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 the background of it. Etymology. Yeah. If, if we want, like for a dip for a podcast or something like what causes that? It's fine. Okay, but the rea- again, the reality to it is the Olympics are really more for female viewers. They just are. Um, guys will watch, but women watch the Olympics and they love them. And they do love them for the females, for the women's stories. But also, if you look at the way that NBC has always broadcast the Olympics, you know, they have these short stories. They tell people's backgrounds, you know, all this amazing stories of triumph and comebacks and et cetera. Like, again, that is more how women watch sports. Men watch sports are like, who can I bet on? How can I win money? And give me the most violent thing possible. Like, that's how we watch. Okay, so the the point is that you have this, you have a captivated female viewer that you've told, I know you really like watching this woman play, but we don't care. And now you throw a team that we know is going to be successful and it's just not deemed as likable. And so, again, I don't think it's a calculated thing where NBC is sitting there going like, well, Cheryl Reeve didn't want Caitlin Clark. So we're not telling an NB- we're not telling a story about the women's team. It's just none of the stories are interesting. And no one's watching. I, I, unless you were hidden under a rock, you knew the NCAA was investigating Michigan. But you probably thought they were just investigating Michigan for um, stealing signs. The NCAA announced today a four-year show cause for uh, Michigan former Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh for impermissible contact with recruits and players while access was uh, was restricted during COVID nineteen pandemic, effectively banning him from college athletics until August of two thousand twenty four. The NCAA said that Harbaugh, who left his alma mater as coach of the L.A. Chargers after last season's championship game, engaged in unethical contact, failed to promote an atmosphere of compliance, and violated head coaching responsibility obligations. The NCAA already put Michigan on three years of probation along with a fine for recruiting limits after reaching a negotiated resolution in the case. Harbaugh did not go along with the agreement. Disputing the allegations, he failed to operate with investigators. His case was handled separately. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I look, I work for a university that has to abide by NCA rules. There are lots of NCA rules that don't make any any sense. I have long been a proponent of the rules of the NCA because like look, they were voted on and approved on by a majority of the schools, so you can fight to change it but don't break a rule and act like you're surprised. The COVID ones are 
a bit draconian, no doubt. And if we think back to COVID, I understand that you look at it now, you're like, that was ridiculous, that was ridiculous, that was ridiculous. The realistic way of looking at it, I believe, is some of them were over the top, but many of them were meant with the right spirit in mind that you didn't want to get people infected that didn't mean to be infected to bring it home to, to mom and dad or somebody who is immunocompromised or God forbid your grandma and grandpa, and then it spreads and it kills them. They have the right intention at heart. They're not always the right execution. But did you know, and I learned this last week, I don't know, you are not allowed to use exercise as punishment for a player. Performance or scholastically or otherwise. You guys know that? In other words, if a player gets in trouble, right? Player gets in trouble. You can't run them, make them do stadium steps or, you know, uh, we used to do these workouts called 25s at Oklahoma State that were just impossible to do. You, you're not technically you're not allowed to do it. Now, everyone I know violates that rule. Now, it's supposed to not, not it's supposed to be a standalone workout only for punishment. Right. There's a gray area there within it and how you do it. The point is so many rules. And one of the big rules is you're responsible as head coach for everybody under your watch. And oh yeah, by the way, you got to completely disclose what you do and why you do it, how you do it, and, and and give up your cell phone. And Jim Harbaugh wasn't going to. Uh, this is the Pete Carroll, though. Pete Carroll, remember, was SC was going on probation right as he left, and you're wondering if he ever leave, and that was what what caused him to leave. So Harbaugh's never coming back to coach college anymore, anyway. Why would you? You won a national championship game. Your last game, it was at your alma mater. You left in a better place. You're good. But I don't think that he'd be done fighting this one because I do believe Jim is about his ethics. You may not agree with them, but um, he's pretty strong in terms of what he believes in his ethics. The hard part is going to be the COVID, COVID stuff where you just weren't allowed to have contact with people and they did. And lots of programs did. And they got caught. They got caught. Um. My take has always been, unless you're buying players, and this is before the world of NIL, and even now, like just I, I just don't like it now. But um, it, buying players, I believe, is different than compensating players and compensating guys that have established themselves in, you know, they they do some appearances and whatever, and there's a reasonable rate there. Like just giving a kid money, especially back then before it was legal against the rules, and doing anything to change somebody's grades or take tests for them. That's unethical. Those two things, I got no problem with you getting fired for. Other stuff, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we actually doing? So, I, you know, and this has nothing to do, by the way, with sign stealings. So there could be additional punishment, I guess, for sign stealing, but... Like, we're not allowing Jim Harbaugh to come to a party that he was no longer going to come to. He's like, I already went to that Christmas party. I don't need to go in again. Like, okay, I'm fine. You're, you're, you're suspended. You can't come anymore. I'm, I'm not coming to your Christmas party. This is uh, Jim Harbaugh's attorney, Tom Mars. The way I see it, Coach Harbaugh's perspective, today's COI decision is like, being in your college and getting a letter from your high school saying you've been suspended because you didn't sign the yearbook. If I were in Coach Harbaugh's shoes and had an $80 million contract of head coach of the Chargers, I wouldn't pay any attention to the findings of a kangaroo court, which claims to represent the principles of the nation's most flagrant repeat violators of antitrust laws. Yeah. I mean, look, Tom Marr is obviously clearly a lawyer, and he's dancing on the grave of the NCAA. And I don't blame him. I think a stronger statement would have been he is the most ethical coach in college football none of this has anything to do with reality but the we made a bunch of money and you're a violator of antitrust laws i don't know you just ask them to hammer michigan harder is that what you're doing and there is a certain sense of you can't win with the ncaa i, I get it my old modern oklahoma state felt like with basketball they cooperated fully and they still got taken out of the ncaa tournament still happened. 